We have so much to cover. I'm not sure we're going to play a game today, but I wanted to show you this highlight from our our 17 year old striker that's going to be 18 on January 1st and joining us. So we're, we played a friendly uh, against this KVM Belgium team. Played it out of the back from our backup goalkeeper. Here, here. I mean, it's triangles. It's beautiful. But I just thought, oh, he's like, yeah, I could play in this game. This is the 95th minute. Look at this. Doinkage. Doinkage. Keeper's coming out. Does it from the top of the box. Oh, ho, ho, ho. if that's a sign of things to come, I'm excited. <laughs> Hello, my friends. Welcome in. It's episode 26. It's also the first episode of 2021. Let's leave all that stuff in the past and have a great year. Thanks for your support. Means a ton. Okay, my friends. So let me just... Oh, there's been so much. We've we've essentially had a consortium. And I, I, I think I've seen this once before, but essentially the consortium link said that this person was going to heavily invest in the club to get majority ownership, I think, and then float the club on the stock market and i was like what what is happening and then it fell apart although it does say well he might come back in the future like he's still looking to invest in dutch football and i'm like what is happening the only result that you've not seen is heracles um we beat them 2-0 away from home panya and vecchia getting goals we played as you can see a bunch of friendlies including against genoa um and that was that was kind of nice so um we played pretty well. Now, you know, it's kind of hard to judge because, you know, these are Belgian Pro League A teams. You know, if you look at the league comparison, that's a ninth, you know, in, in Europe type league. So fairly decent and currently in fifth place. And then KV Mechelen is currently in 16th place. So you'd think we probably should have done better there. Although it was essentially how I did the friendlies was... The first friendly against Zult Vargem, 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 Zult, um, was our starters. And then the next one was pretty much all the backup players. And then going back and forth to get everybody's match sharpness up. And so I guess maybe it's fair that it was 3-2, uh, you know, dealing with it that way. So um, we've gotten uh, Go Ahead Eagles as our Dutch Cup second round. And they are 19th in the league below us, which is kind of tragic. We have done some transfer business, but it's all out, <laughs> essentially. So, Lars Vesenar, which was one of our mediocre goalkeepers, we've sold for 30 and a half grand with no sell-on uh, fee or anything like that. Um, we've extended some contracts of some players, and then as part of that, they wanted to be loaned out. So, we're sending most of them to door trucks because no, like, I've not experienced this. We're a decent, we're at a decent level, right? Like, the Eredivisie is not like Serie C, right? Like... But nobody is interested in our players, which is kind of odd. Like, we've had some Belgian clubs um, loan some players or be interested or do transfers or something like that. But I was expecting a lot more, like, clubs being interested. I mean, I'm not saying these guys are the best talent. But, like, you know, why isn't a, a you know, French national team coming in at us or a Ligue du or something like that, right? I, I don't know. It's just kind of odd. Uh, so Dante Ruthoff, um, who extended... Um, I think he's got a shot at being decent, decent enough to sell, maybe, um, is, uh, going on loan, right? Like, what is this? Or no, is he just, nope, nope, he's just leaving. I thought I loaned him. Hmm. Um, Juan Camillo Castillo shows up tomorrow. <laughs> he may slot right in. We'll talk about it. Keys to board, we are selling, um, for 3 million to VVV Venlo. Um, he wanted to go. He's upset. It's slightly more than his current value. I'm totally fine with it, to be honest with you completely. Um, Raphael Struik is going to go, yes, loan. We're sending him down to Dortrecht because nobody's interested. Um, Sam Stein, we tried to like find him a spot. And instead, he's just going to transfer to Torrense. So good on him for nothing. No, it's a loan. Dadgummit, I should get this right. Um, why does it say transfer? That's a loan. That's, did I? Mm, 
That's a loan. I, okay. I got thrown off by Dante. They're all loans. Uh, Andy Sarpong is getting reloaned to Dordrecht. Um, they've actually, you know, cause I, I'd, I'd only done it for the, until the next transfer window. And now they actually came back and said they were interested and they're willing to pay a little bit more for him, which is kind of nice. We've tried to sell Vincente, Vincente Bissowin, um, and nobody has been interested. Like he could, you know, he could be decent if we let him develop a little, little bit longer, but nah, I would just move him on. And then Angelo, who I just showed you with that dirty doink um, from distance, a dirty doink from distance, dirty doink from distance t-shirt, anybody? Um, either footed. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of excited about him, to be honest with you. Oh, the other thing I was like, because this clause is up here, we're not going to sell this one. However, I did, I, this is why I paused to do the recording here, even though we're not to the AZ game. We, we had a clause for Feng Zhao, okay, okay, sold him for 20 grand, okay, like, that's something I did that wasn't prior to my management, this actually happened, okay, now he's played, good for him, for some reason he's valued at 1.6 million, I guess because he's in China. I guess he's making 6.75k a week. Are you serious? Are you serious? This guy's making 6.75k a week. That's unbelievable. However, we had a um, a 30% profit that we could sell for 1.8 million. Okay, you do the math there. Okay, let's do it live. That means he would have to sell for 6 million more than they paid for him, which was 20 grand. I just... Don't think that's going to happen. So we quickly cashed that out to take the 1.8 million. Thank you very much. Like, that seems off to me. Like, that seems broken. Is that a broken thing in Football Manager? Or is that, I'm just not familiar with the China. I know China, the Chinese league spends a ton of money on players. Um, and then they, I think they clamp down on that. So, like, I'm just really not understanding this. So if you understand that, leave a comment. In other news, my friends... Panya and Al Louise are gone on international duty to the Asian Nations Cup until potentially the middle of February. Until February, sorry, February 13th. Now, if they don't get out of the group stage, right, I guess it could end on the 21st. But I was like, excuse me, what? What? You, you're going where? <laughs> Like, excuse me? This is significant. Um, Panya, not as much. I mean, Panya's a great player. Don't, but, and why Why do we not... Why do we not... Why do we not know about our own player? Is that a bug? Oh, dear. Um, but if you'll notice over here... Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Lewis Nielsen broke his ankle on international... I, was it international duty? When was it? Uh, let's go take a look. Impact from fall. I don't remember if it was in training or not. So he's missed a lot. And is going to be out for another four to eight weeks. And he's our, you know, if Al Luis can't go it right back, Lewis Nielsen goes it right back. Now one of them is at the Asian Nations Cup. And the other one has got a broken ankle. So, in the meantime, Kane Seedorf has, I mean, he hasn't played in the league yet because it kind of worked out, but Aloise got to play the last league game and then he's, he's piecing out for a month and a half, potentially. Um, so he's not had to play yet, but that's why I think, do we just take this guy, Juan, and be like, all right, off you go, <laughs> Look, welcome to the team, you're our new right back for, until Aloise comes back. That... Oh, that seems like you would you really do, but you might actually do that. I'm going to have to do that. We've also extended Pete by him primarily because I listened to my commenters. So Jake Adkins said, definitely keep by a hundred percent. He's a series original and regular. Who's been a multiple time player of the season. And as you rightly, I'm reading from my phone. And as you rightly mentioned, he's got great social standing, great episode, man. That was on episode 25. So Jake, if this doesn't work out, I mean, everybody in the comments is going to blame you. 
So we've extended him until 2025. The good news is he accepted squad player status. I tried doing like impact sub, but he was like, no. And so we went squad player, which he's already getting squad player minutes with, with three starts and three subs on a six, nine, four. So I think, I think it's okay. And at the end of the day, we did it early enough that if we had to sell him in like six months or 12 months or something like that, I think we could still get some value, but we decided to keep him around. Just thought I'd give you the update on all of the promises that we've had. So I turned down an offer originally for Keith DeVore and he got upset. And then we talked about it. I was like, okay, if they come in at this level and he was like, oh, okay, cool, fine. Like they'd offered like half of his value. And I'm like, dude, we're not doing that. Um, the rest are just like find a loan player, which is what makes that door direct affiliate link very, very useful because no one wants our players. So we just send them all there. And in fact, let me, I'll show you door direct here in a second. Um, and then everybody else is play youth players, and they're happy with that. And Barack wants to be played in an attacking mid as an advanced playmaker. It's interesting that he's very pleased because we played him a lot as deep line playmaker in the midfield three, so which is kind of interesting. And of course, I told Lewis Nielsen here, "Hey, you know, we'll 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 play you when you come back." And he was like, "Oh yeah, yeah cool, 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 cool." Let me show you a door trick. Just look at their squad. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight loaned players. Which is kind of interesting. At one point, they've, they've obviously, I think, had some drop off in the transfer window or the beginning of the transfer window, maybe, or something like that. But, like, there was, like, even more blue here. And they're going to get some more of our players. So, it's kind of interesting. It's like, they're 16th right now. Um, which is actually, you know, better than you would expect for a club that just got promoted. But they are getting, they're getting the job quasi done, I think you could say with everyone else's players. Which is fine. You know, like, I guess that that's one way to do it, you know? Um... So this is where the standings are. We're in fifth place. Um, Utrecht above us and Ajax both have games in hand. AZ and Feyenoord below us have games in hand. But if they win those games, they won't jump us, even though we're playing AZ, right? So, like, that becomes a six-pointer. We are doing quite well, I think, standing in fifth place. An average rating standpoint. Now, let's talk about stats. So this is something that's been going around on Twitter um, in that key tackles are broken in, uh, in FM. Which, and I don't think it's the only one, but like this is saying no one in the air DVC has had a key tackle, which is clearly not true. <laughs> like that's just not possible. So I I'm curious what your thoughts are, right? Like it, it seems that there are a couple of stat things that have been wrong. I guess saw another thing the other day that was like showing the end of game XG was 2.73. But then when you went to like the match summary screen, it showed it as a 2.11. So there seems to be some odd things going on inside of FM, and we're, we're well past the launch now. Like, this to me is a pretty broken thing, right? Like, the fact that key tackles aren't being tracked, or if they're being tracked, they're not showing up. So it's, it's either the match engine isn't recognizing when a key tackle happens, or it's recognizing it's happening, but it doesn't show up in any of the reporting, which I can only imagine is going to disrupt things like player ratings and value and stuff like that. I'm not an expert in the match engine and the stats behind all, you know, behind the scenes in FM, but I'm curious if you think it's a big deal. I, I kind of go, you know, like I've been enjoying playing. It's, it's a trade, right? Like the match engine is so much better this year that does this bother me a little bit, but does it bother me so much that I would go, Hey, let's go back to FM 20. No, because I think the match engine is that much more enjoyable. But, my friends, I think that's where I'm going to leave you at today because I, I don't want to try and cram two games into one episode. So, I am going to bring you back to take on Azad and Go Ahead Eagles back-to-back -back matches in tomorrow's episode um, or in the next episode. I may throw some, some other non-FM videos in the mix here at the beginning of the year. But I just want to say thanks for all your support in 2020. It's been absolutely crazy. Um, looking to go from, I think the phrase is strength to strength in 2021. I hope you and yours are doing well. Hopefully by the end of this year, life is returning to somewhat normal and we'll see you next time. Make sure that like button, you hit it over there. Have a good one.